Are you looking to buy a Nakiri? If so, you'll want to watch this video before buying one. Also, before you watch this video, you might want to check out our What is in the Kiri video that you can find right here. And if you haven't already, please think about hitting that like and subscribe button. So for the past several weeks, we took a look at a couple different Nakiris. From the cheapest all the way to the most expensive, which is the Thai brand, the Kiri brand, which is a $6 knife, all the way up to the Japanese handmade Shimabara, which is about $150. Now, after testing a couple of these out myself, these are the following specs that I will personally look for when I shop for my next Nakiri. So the first thing we want to take a look at is the dimension of the knife itself. Let's go ahead and take a look at the blade length. This right here is the Shimabara Nakiri, and as you guys can see in the past week's video, this is probably my favorite Nakiri out of the four in front of me, and here's why. This one has a 165 millimeters blade length, so this is going to be from heel to tip. 165 is the shortest I will go, and I think the 165 millimeter range is a very, very capable length. Next, we'll want to take a look at blade height. So for myself personally, I would like to see or shop for an Akira that's at least 50 millimeters tall. The reason I like a 50, at least a 50 millimeters tall Nakiri is that it just gives me more knife to guide, gives me a little bit more room to scoop the ingredients, and it just makes the push cut and the downward chop cut a little bit more natural to me. So that's why I like at least a 50 millimeter blade height. Now, if you want to splurge or if you have the extra money, I would even take a look at tall Nakiris, which is like 60 to 70 millimeters blade height range. So that is definitely something you want to think about. So the next thing we want to take a look at is the grind and blade thickness. This is another very important aspect because if the blade is too thick, then the knife or the Nakiri is not going to perform as it is intended to. So when I look for a Nakiri myself, I lean towards a thinner blade. The reason you want a thinner blade is the performance. You have to think about what a Nakiri was originally intended to do. It was intended for a push cut and a downward chop cut. And when you have a thick blade and when you're trying to perform a downward chop cut, what does it do when you have a thick blade? It just gets stuck or it wedges and cracks open the food. Whereas when you have a thinner blade, it glides right clean through that food without tearing up your ingredients and it just performs with a very, very clean cut. So that's why when you pick up a Nakiri, you'll want to look for a thinner blade with a very even and gradual grind. Another thing I want to mention is the spine thickness. A lot of times people ask for a spine thickness right at the heel. Yes, that number does matter, matter but it's not all telling. For example, the Shimabara right here has an over two millimeters thick spine thickness right at the heel. Just like the forged table also have a very similar thickness at the heel at the spine. But when you take a look at the choil shot, you can see that the Shimabara is a much, much thinner knife and it grinds down to like, just an extremely, extremely thin and sharp point. Whereas, even though the forge the table knife has a similar spine thickness right at the heel. When you look at the choro shot, you can clearly tell that the knife itself is much thicker and it is not going to perform as well as the Shimabara Nakiri just because of how thick the blade is. So the next thing we want to cover is steel. I'm not going to go super in depth in this. I think steel is very subjective and a very, very personal choice. So go with whatever you're comfortable with whatever you're comfortable maintaining, whatever you can maintain, because you know there are many pros and cons between all of these knives steels, okay? Some are harder, some are you know sharper, some have finer grain, you know, there's just a super wide range that you can go into that I'm not going to go into here. So go with the type of steel that you're comfortable with and uh, whatever fits your bill. Next we'll want to cover the blade profile. I personally prefer a very, very flat belly Nakiri. The reason for this is because the Nakiri is intended and designed for chop cuts. So a chop cut cut goes straight up and down with maybe a little bit of a forward push. So it's like a forward push chop cut. So when you perform this cut, you're going to want a lot of flat surface uh, or flat edge that makes full contact with your cutting surface. This way, it ensures that your ingredient is cut clean through. Whereas, if you have a bit of a belly on your Nakiri, it doesn't perform the downward chop cut and doesn't cut clean through the ingredients. So, 
That's why I personally prefer a very, very flat profile for my Nikiris. And the next thing is a rounded tip. As much as I love the Shimabara Nikiri, it has a very, very pointy tip. Having a pointy tip does not allow you to do slight rocking motions. I understand that the Nikiri is not intended for rocking purpose, but if you have a rounded tip, it allows you just a little bit of rock just in case you need it. And also, if you do do a slight rock cut, think about it. A sharp angle like this is going to dig right into your cutting surface. It's going to just screw up your cutting board or worse, if that tip gets stuck in your cutting board and you move it wrong, it'll break that tip right off. So I think a rounded tip right here with a very flat profile is probably the best profile that fits fits me. The last thing we want to cover is price point. Now price point is also a very, very personal thing. You know what you're comfortable spending. You know your priorities. All right, there are a ton of different Nikiris out there for many different price points. As you can see in front of me, $6, $50, $90, $150, and then there are some, of course, that are even more expensive. But as you can see, there's a knife for everybody everybody's budget or everybody's spending comfort. So the last question you guys are probably going to ask me is which one of these knives do I recommend out of the four in front of me? Now, I hate to have to pick three knives, but we all have to do that. I apologize. The uh, ice machine decided to run. The first knife that is out is the forced to table knife, unfortunately, because of how thick the knife is. Now, this was a deal breaker for me, just because of how thick the knife is. If this knife was just ground thinner, this would be a very, very nice contender because it has a very flat blade profile. It has a rounded tip. It's not overly short, all right? And the fit and finish of this knife is very nice, and it comes with a VG10 steel. So, unfortunately, because of the grind and the thickness, a fortune table is out. Next knife that is out is the Dawa. Dawa, fit and finish is nice. The price is right, all right? The blade thinness is also right, but the blade profile, I do not like. I like the blade height. If this was not a blade that angled upward or angled downward, depending on how you hold it, if it was just flat straight across, this would be a clear winner for me because it's tall, it's thin, and it's very light in the hands, and it takes a very, very nice edge. But unfortunately, because of the blade profile, the Dawa is out. Now it comes down to, crazily, the cheapest and the most expensive out of the two. The Kiwi Nakiri I am extremely, extremely impressed with. It's a $6 knife. And for some other people, you can probably find this even cheaper, like I said in the video. I'll cut that cover, it's covered all in the other video. So if you want more in depth, go check out the other video. But the reason I will have to pick the Shimabara over it is well, it's craftsmanship. Of course, you're paying a lot more for it. But I gotta tell you, this white number two steel and this grind, even though the Kiwi Nakiri performs really well. When you cut with this Shimabara, you can really feel just a big difference in performance. I mean, when you just cut through things, it glides so clean through in comparison to even the Nakiri or, or the Kiwi Nakiri that the Shimabara is, is the clear winner. You know, if, if, if you don't look at the price point, of course, but if you're tight on a budget, you don't want to spend a ton of money. It's a six dollar knife for a kiwi nakiri and a like i think i paid 150 dollars for this shimabara nakiri but with the 150 dollars this knife also came with a fully custom spotted tamarind handle that i requested from taylor all right now this pretty much wraps up the video for the week but i have a recommendation for you guys i did some research i did some research all right I looked around and shopped around and I found an extremely, extremely good con contender that I wish I had in front of me to show you guys or do a video on. And if you guys do want to see a video on it, just comment down below. I'll grab one and I'll try to do a video on it for you. 
and that is, I'm going to pull it up right now, the Tojiro Hairline Nakiri. It has a 65 millimeter blade length. It has a 50 millimeter blade height. It has a rounded tip, a flat profile. It is made with Shirogami number no. two steel. It is Japanese made. And it is an extremely affordable price point at $45. So if you guys are looking to dip your toes into the Nakiri world and you're not ready to spend $150 but you want to test out something that I think will be really, really, a really great starter, honestly. It is the Tojiro Hairline Nakiri. And it also, just judging from the tutorial shots from the pictures, it is also a very, very thin blade. So, I mean, it fits all the build that we have mentioned in this video. So, yeah, check that out. See if that's a, a, a good fit for you guys. It's not going to be top of the line, of course. It is still... A Tojiro knife, so they're still very good knives, very well heat treated, but they are factory manufactured, all right? So they're made in a factory. So that's why, even though it's made with Shirogami number no. two steel, it's not as expensive as the Shimabara right here, all right? The Shimabara is very, ex is more on the expensive side because, well, it's a handmade knife and it also has a custom handle on it, also another handmade custom handle on it. So that's why the Shimabara is, is a little bit more on the expensive side, but it's kind of comparing apples to oranges when you compare handmade to, uh, to factory made. And it's not really a fair comparison either. So anyway, that is my recommendation for you guys. So check out the Tojiro if you guys want to. And this wraps up the video for the week. And if you guys do like the video, please hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. It'll mean the world to me. It'll help me support all this madness. And I will see you guys next week. Bye.